It's intimidating, isn't it? Those fangs. It's a beautiful animal. The cottonmouth would have to be one of my most favourite snakes. It's gorgeous. It looks beautiful. It has a great big fangs, which looks so impressive. And that's fairly harmless, as long as you don't put your hand in its mouth. <laughs> okay, how I draw the cottonmouth. This is not exactly a how-to draw. It's more of a some advice on how I draw. Okay, the first problem we come across are the scales. The outer coil here, the scales stretch right out and there's a gap between the scales. The inner coil, the scales overlap. And that makes for a bit of a tricky drawing. And also when it breathes, really large breath in, it also expands out too. So that outer coil where the lung is, it's going to be the place where those scales are the most stretched out. So I'm starting off penciling this out yeah, pretty quickly. Now, like I said, this is not exactly a follow on how to draw. If you would like me to do this, maybe leave a comment below. But this is me problem solving some of the issues I have drawing, and especially a camouflage animal like this, how to draw this animal and still make it look sort of okay. So penciling out, making sure I get all the muscles right in the mouth. And I love the chubby body on it too. When I draw scales, I start off usually by doing the vertebrate line. Wherever I think the spine should be on the animal, I put two lines like this. Then under those lines, I continue all the scale lines all the way around the body. This creates an interesting effect. It almost looks like a bit of op art. So it already looks a bit 3D, but often you lose that 3D look when you start putting the camouflage on, as I'm going to show you shortly. Imagine the snake's made up of bricks. Brick here, brick there. Knock all those bricks down. And you've also got to imagine these bricks are going around the snake. When it comes to the tail, you just do the best you can. It's a snake in grass. Grass might hide bits. Shadow might hide bits. Um, don't get too hung up on it. But it's fairly accurate. Bits of grass here and there. I don't want to put too much grass on the snake because I'm trying to show you, trying to show off here, drawing all the scales. Eventually you're going to replace all the bricks with scales. I'm going to get out the Indian ink and my nib pen and knock out some of the details. Again, working on that mouth. It is called a cotton mouth after all. And it's a very important feature of this snake. When it feels threatened, it puts its head back over its body, opens up its mouth, shows off its fangs, looks absolutely awesome and gorgeous. And it's basically saying, don't mess with me. So if you're drawing a dragon, a basilisk, a snake, a reptile, or a fish even, and you're using the brickwork pattern to start with, you might want to pencil in the scales first. However, I'm sort of pretty used to drawing snakes by now, so I'm just going straight in with the ink. You could use a fine marker if you want, if it's waterproof. Now foreshortening, see when I turn this cardboard scale like that, it's very narrow. So and when I put it back the way it's supposed to be. It's like twice as wide. So we're drawing these scales going around the body. As it takes the corner, you've got to make them more narrow. And down in here, where they're overlapping and narrow, it's extra narrow there. Extra skinny lines, skinny scales, I should say. Just doing a few finishing details with the ink, making sure all the face, what you can see of the face is there. And after I've finished these little fine details with the nib, I get the eraser out and I rub out all the pencil lines. So all I'm left with is nice clean ink drawing. Now I'm going to thin out a little bit of Indian ink and do what's called an ink wash, making some parts darker. Now I'm marking in with watercolour some of that beautiful patterns I've got. And this is where I 
don't understand how people cannot see snakes are so beautiful when you see these beautiful amazing patterns that not only work as camouflage but they're also just beautiful in their own right i mean imagine some sort of master weaver weaving this pattern um it's kind of like you know you see textile artists do patterns like that beautiful patterns gorgeous patterns putting a bit of background in here and this is where we start to see the problem the problem is the camouflage the snakes so nicely camouflaged with a beautiful pattern that we start losing the values of the color by value i mean the lightness and the darkness it's all over the place and it causes confusion to the eye and that's what it's meant to do in nature however when you're doing artwork of these animals that are really well camouflaged you're going to have to try and overcome that camouflage problem i do it often halfway through a painting i'll often do this i'll do a little mini light plan so arrows there showing where the light's hitting the animal and where i should shade it so if i can work out where the values and the lights and the darks should be on a little scribbly piece of paper like this i can go back in with a plan so with a bit of Payne's gray i'm making some bits darker putting in the shadow bits and i'm also extending those shadowy bits down into the ground in between the blades of grass and that's also anchoring the snake into its environment making it look like it's you know sitting in the grass now i'm coming in with a bit of gouache if you've got watercolor a watercolor set you probably should get yourself a little tube of white gouache it's so handy i'm adding gouache to all the little highlights here and that's lightening up those areas it's also bringing back some of those uh, lines that i had those lines of scales so the snake is still camouflaged however you can see it a little bit better now you can imagine the sun shining on one side of it causing a shadow on the other side giving a slightly more 3d look finally just a slight fleshy tone into the mouth but i don't want to put too much just the slightest hint of it reality is there is it's a lot more fleshy looking but I can't get over how suddenly bright it looks and so I want to leave it sort of white like cotton I guess. I hope this video is being helpful for you in your art journey. If it has let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about art put that in the comments below I'll do my best to answer them and I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime stay indoors stay safe and don't go playing with venomous snakes.